Good morning, and welcome to Thursday Morning Prayer from Community Presbyterian Church in Payson, Arizona. This is Thursday, February 25th, 2021. And I'm Reverend Linda Westcott, a retired Presbyterian minister who attends the church here in Payson. And I invite you to join with me today in some verses of scripture and prayer and words of hope and faith. So if you've just tuned in, you might want to pause the video while you get settled in and make yourself comfortable. Just relax for a moment and maybe take a couple of deep breaths and let your anxieties and worries go. Okay, now that's better, isn't it? And we're ready to center ourselves and our thoughts on some words of comfort and encouragement from God's Word. The opening sentence for today are from the Psalms. Psalm 125, verses 1 and 2. Those who trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, which cannot be moved, but abides forever. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surrounds his people from this time on and forevermore. And now Psalm 124. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. And now we move on to Psalm 22, a psalm of King David, who begins with, David feeling sorry for himself and forsaken by God as he pleads for deliverance from a suffering and all the hostility being, being shown toward him. But then at verse 23, today's reading, the psalm takes a turn. Evidently, God has heard David's cries and has rescued him. And David is now telling us to praise God who hears us when we cry, and that's quite encouragement, and to proclaim the Lord's deliverance to future generations. Now, we might think of David here as speaking to us today in our generation and in this time when we're struggling with COVID and knowing that God is with us and will hear our prayers. Now we'll read Psalm 22, verses 23 through 31. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you, who, you offspring of Jacob, glorify him. Stand in awe of him, all you offspring of Israel, for he did not despise or abhor the affliction of the afflicted. He did not hide his face from me, but heard when I cried to him. For you, O Lord, comes my praise in the great congregation. My vows I will pay before those who fear him. The afflicted shall eat and be satisfied. Those who seek him shall praise the Lord. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations shall worship before him. For domination belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. To him indeed shall all who sleep in the earth bow down. Before him shall bow all who go down to the dust, and I shall live for him. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord and proclaim his deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying that he has done it. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now let us pray. God of compassion, we praise you that you look upon our frail lives in love with love and understanding, and that you desire for us all new life in Jesus Christ. 
We are overwhelmed by your love, which goes to the cross for us, endures the grave, and leads us to new life. By your Spirit, strengthen our souls to be brave and bold in Christ's service. Take the offering of our lives and use us for your purposes. In the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord. Amen. And now our Old Testament reading from Genesis 15 features a biblical patriarch who lived long before King David. In verse 1 we hear, The word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Yes, Abram, or Avram in Hebrew, but better known to us as Abraham. After God changed his name to Abraham. He was 75 years old when God called him to go from his home with all of his possessions to a new land, which God promised to give his offspring and make of them a new nation. So we read from Genesis 15, 1 to 6, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O oh Lord, what will you give me for I continue childless? And the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. Then God brought him outside and said, Look toward the heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then God said to Abram, So shall your descendants be. And then comes the most important part of our scripture reading. It says, And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. And now this meant that God considered Abram's believing the promise as having the right kind of relationship between him and God. But as it turned out, 25 years passed, and it wasn't until Abraham was 99 years old that God decided to change his name from Abram, meaning exalted father, to Abraham, meaning father of a multitude or many nations. And this was right after God had told Abraham that his promise to him was finally going to take to come true after all of that time. He and his barren wife Sarai, that we know as Sarah, would bear him a son in her own age. And that actually happened when Abraham was 100 years old and his wife Sarah was 90. And that was a long time to wait. But you see, Abraham believed. And hearing his story about how long he had to wait and still believe and have faith helps us to have hope also, even when we may wonder just how long will this time of COVID last. This Christmas, our family celebrations were our New Year's Eve. We'd gotten used to getting together after Christmas from the time I served as a pastor in a native village in Alaska and needed to be there for Christmas. So our two daughters and families still have their own traditions on the actual Christmas Eve. So it was on this past New Year's Eve when I received an interesting Christmas gift called a wax amaryllis bulb, an amaryllis being a flower. This came encased in wax 
and looks like a plump purple eggplant. And I quote, it said, this waxed armorellus bulb holds all the stored energy and moisture it needs to grow and bloom. No water, fertilizing, or soil required. Kind of like a metaphor for us who are created in the image of God. Well, I was to place the wax-covered bulb on any flat surface in a location that got bright, indirect light and rotate it slightly each day and to expect flowers to bloom in four to six weeks. Well, I waited and I looked every day and nothing was happening and I was about to give up on that bulb. But then almost exactly six weeks later, there it was, one sturdy green leaf had broken up through that wax. And I'm glad that like Abraham, I didn't lose hope or faith that this promise would come true. In our New Testament scripture from Romans 3, 21 through 26, the Apostle Paul says, But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been disclosed and is attested by the law and the prophets. The righteousness of God through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. For there is no distinction, since all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. They are now justified by his grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus whom God put forward as a sacrifice of atonement by his blood, effective through faith. He did this to show his righteousness, because in his divine forbearance, he had passed over the sins previously committed. It was to prove at this present time that he himself is righteous, and that he justifies the one who has faith in Jesus. You see that by the time of Paul's writing, there had been a new covenant, a new one, not exactly like the one God had had with Abraham and his people. And we are now justified by the gift of grace, by the righteousness of God, but through faith in Jesus Christ for all who believe. And we are now living in the new covenant time, and we thank God and Jesus Christ for that. Let us pray a prayer of thanksgiving in intercession. Our loving Savior, as we continue along in our Lenten journey, walking with you and taking those steps of faith and hope that you made possible for us through your sacrifice, May we remember that your journey to the cross was one of love for us. We who would not or could not take those steps ourselves. Yet believing in your Father's promise that we might be saved through grace, not anything that we could do to earn our salvation, we trudge onward asking for your forgiveness and then failing again and again. And though we are not as willing or able to pick up that cross and carry it ourselves, we wish to follow in your footsteps by loving others as much as you have loved us. So our faithful God, we trust in the promise made to us, as Abraham did, knowing that in our own time you will bring them to fruition in our lives, even if we have to wait as in this time of COVID, when things might seem confusing and we can't yet see the end of this journey that we are on. May we believe through faith that you are with us in this journey and believe that you are still the creator God who has not left the creation to so-called powers more capable than yours. And now let's just take a moment of silent prayer for our intercessions.
for those whom we care about, who have been impacted by COVID, inclement weather, and other adversities. Lord, heal not only our bodies, but our minds and our spirits. We pray in Jesus' name. And now join with me in the prayer that Jesus taught us to say, using whatever version you are most comfortable with. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Receive the benediction. May our Lord Jesus Christ himself, and God the Father, who loved us and in his grace gave us unfailing courage and a firm hope, encourage you and strengthen you to always do and say what is good. Amen.